Hi everyone, welcome to another video and today I want to talk to you guys about stack and tilt and how you can apply some of the concepts to help you with your ball strike. And if you enjoy this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more golf related content. Let's get into it. So during my time here in Singapore, I've had a lot of opportunity to learn some new things to help people with their swings and one of them was, was about stack and tilt. Now I have the great opportunity of working with Rob Sheeney and Nick Taylor who have extensive knowledge about this system. So I just wanted to share some concepts that may help you uh, with your swing. Controlling your low point or being able to hit the same spot on the ground consistently is considered to be the first key fundamental of stack and tilt. Now it is very obvious that the better the player is, the more often they're able to hit solid contact and hit the same spot on the ground almost all of the time. Now the worse the player is, the less control they have of their low point. So they can hit the ground first a lot, or they can hit the top of the ball a lot of the time. So if you're one of those players that has difficulty controlling where the bottom of the swing is, then most likely you have trouble controlling the distances of your ball, uh, the ball flight, and even the dispersion as well. So I will be sharing three things that will improve your knowledge or understanding of how to control your low point in your swing. So the first key element in being able to control your low point is about how you're distributing your weight throughout the swing. So this can be visually represented by the center of your hip and the center of your shoulders. Okay, so now conventionally, when people take the club back, you can see that the center of their shoulder kind of moves to the right of, of the center of their hip, or their upper body gets more behind the golf ball than their hip does. Now, with stack and tilt, the idea is that by the time you get to the top of the swing, the center of your shoulders is directly on top of the center of your hip. Okay? So now, according to second tilt, they allow you to put more weight of your um, more weight into the lead leg at address and to hold it there. And all that really does is that it allows you to just stay or prevent you from moving away from the target. So if you can make sure that your the, the center of your shoulders and the center of your hip is on top of each other, you may feel as if the majority or a little bit more of your weight stays on your lead side. But if you can do that properly, you'll find that you'll be able to hit the same spot on the ground much more frequently. So the second element um, that controls the low point is what you're doing with your wrists and how that affects the radius of your swing. So now, the radius can be defined as the distance between your lead shoulder and the club head. Okay, so tip, ideally what we would want is the, is the radius to be at its longest just after uh, the ball, just because that's where we want the low point to be, it's just in front of the golf ball. So now, if I were to bend my wrists in a certain way, you can see that that shortens the radius. Okay, so the distance between my lead shoulder and the club head has shortened just because I've bent my wrists. Okay? Now, the majority of players, what they would tend to do is they would extend out their radius too early, which would bring the low point kind of too far behind the golf ball. Now, for them to avoid the ground, what they would have to do is that they would, in coming into impact, they would shorten the radius by bending their arms and breaking their wrists. Okay? So now, just assuming that your body is doing what it's supposed to, right? The center of your shoulders is directly above the center of your hip. If I extend out my radius too early, I can still hit the ground first. Okay, so then we have to make sure that you're able to control the radius so that the, the longest point between the, the shoulder and the club is just after impact. And that should also allow you to hit the same spot on the ground all the time. So the third element that controls the low point is the path that you're swinging the club. So a golfer that swings the club too much from in to out, will have the low point too far behind the golf ball. And reversely, if a player is too over the top and the club is outside of the golf ball coming down, they tend to be a bit more steep into the golf ball and the low point actually shifts more in front of the ball. So now this can actually be visually represented best with uh, a noodle. If I, if I bring you a pool noodle here and put it on a, on a slight arc, just kind of representing a slight into-out path. Now, when I put this noodle kind of on a lot more of an into-out path, kind of exaggerated, you can see that the bottom 
um, of the noodle or kind of where the noodle touches the ground is further behind the golf ball, right? Now, reversely, if I bring the path too much out to in, the other way, you can see that the bottom of the, of the pool noodle touches the ground further in front of the golf ball. Okay, so this is kind of a good representation uh, of the relationship between the path and the low point of the swing. So there you have it. Those are the three basic key elements according to stack and tilt that will help you control the bottom of your swing. Now, if you don't know too much about stack and tilt, I would highly recommend that you do some research on it. Um, you may find that it changes your perspective on the golf swing itself. So be sure to follow me on my Instagram at Jonathan K Moss. Uh, but other than that, if you guys have any other questions, please leave a comment down below. Uh, and until next time, I will see you guys on the next video.